Hi, good morning. So here we'll go through the power of a two-tailed test. So in a two-tailed test, so the power is given by the formula power equal to phi r. So minus z one minus alpha by two plus mu naught minus phi one modulus mu naught minus phi one divided by sigma into root n. So here this value of z alpha can be the same values used for constant well. So that means that if alpha is equal to 5% or 0 0.05, so we can consider that it's a 95% confident well. And proportionally, we can end up using 1.645, 1.96 as the value of Z alpha. If alpha is 10%, which is 0 0.0, 0 0.10, so we can use 90% confidence interval and the Z alpha value, so the value becomes 1.645. If alpha is 1%, so which is 0 0.01, which is 99% confidence interval, so we can end up using 2.575 as the value of Z alpha by 2. So notice that all these values are Z1 minus alpha by 2. So you can substitute directly into the formula and calculate the answer proportionally. So the idea behind power of a two-tailed test is that in a two-tailed test, you have two regions the two regions have an acceptable value of power. So the reason why we take only one single formula, we take mod, so this particular part, is to make sure that there is no negative value. So don't forget to remember the mod value. So let's take a simple example. If you consider a two-tailed test, this would be how the diagram would look like from both sides. So make sure that you remember the formula. If you remember the formula, you can write the 1 minus beta answer easily. So with that, let's continue the next topic, sample size determination. So what we discussed until now is power. So what we want to know now is if you fix the value of power. What is the sample size needed? So if you fix the value of power, so what is the sample size needed? So that is the method that determines the sample size. So here also, we describe the sample size formula for a one-tailed test and two-tailed test. So the formula applies to both right and left one-tailed test. And it also, the, you have another formula for the two-tailed test. So for a one-tailed test, the formula is Ern equal to Z1 Z alpha z1 minus beta plus z1 minus alpha divided by mu naught minus mu1 whole square so z alpha z1 minus alpha and z1 minus beta whole square into sigma square so this value represents the sample size So this is, this formula specifically is for a one-tailed test. So what happens for a two-tailed test? So for a two-tailed test, Ern becomes
z1 minus beta plus z1 minus alpha by 2 whole square into sigma square by mu naught minus mu 1 whole square. So the only change is in one tail test we use 1 minus alpha, in two tail test we use 1 minus alpha by 2. So these are the formulas for determining the sample size in a test. So let's take an example. So we already did this problem in the birth rate data. So we have mu naught is 120, mu 1 is 115, sigma is 24, alpha is 0 0.05 and 1 minus beta is 0 0.8. And they've asked us to use a one tail test. And they're asking you to find the sample size needed to conduct the test. So let's import this data into a separate slide. So you have mu naught equal to 120 ounces, mu 1 equal to 115 ounces, alpha is 0 0.04, 1 minus beta is 0 0.80. And it's a one-sided test. So for a one-sided test, the formula for m is z1 minus alpha plus z1 minus beta whole square into sigma square by mu naught minus mu 1 whole square. So here sigma is 24. So substitute everything into the data. So you get z1 minus 0 0.05 plus z0.80 whole square into 24 square divided by 120 minus 115 whole square. So you get z0.95 plus z0.80 whole square into 24 square divided by 5 square. Now, so we are looking for two values one value is z0.95 and the other value is z0.80 so what do we do in this case so in this case in the z table we are looking for a probability of 0.95 so we have a 0.95 probability so here here and here so proportionally the value is 1.6 and and the value is 0 0.1.645 so you get that 0 0.95 is 1.645 and we are looking for a value of 0 0.80 so for 0 0.80 the closest value that you can find is 7995 and 8023 so the value is 0 0.8 so 84 and 85 so because the closest value is 0 0.84 so we'll take that as the answer so z0.80 becomes 0 0.84 so now substitute everything into the formula so you have 24 square into 1.645 plus 0 0.8 4 square divided by 25 so now so let's use a calculator so you have 24 square into you have 1.6 Four five plus zero point eight four square divided by twenty five. So you get an answer of one hundred and forty five. So you get an answer of one hundred and forty two point two seven. So because it's a sample size, the yeah. So round it off to the nearest value and don't round it off to the smaller value, round it off to the next value. So the next value is 143. So the sample size for the problem 
PM is 143. So this is how you can calculate for a one-sided test the sample size. So there is the formula that you can use, there is the process that you can use. And take your time and use the other problem here. So use this problem and try to solve it. So here you have a null mean of 175. So 175 is mu naught. The alternative mean is mu 1. So mu naught is 175. Mu 1 is 190. The standard deviation is 50. And they've asked you for a one-sided test of 5%. So 5% is alpha. 90% power is 1 minus beta. So use the data. So pause the video right here for pause the video right here and try to solve this problem and try to find out the sample size using the formula. So what are the factors that affect the sample size? So the first factor is as n increases, the variance will also increase. Another factor is as the sample size increases, you can decrease the alpha value. So basically you're decreasing the type 1 error. You're decreasing the type 1 error. And as you increase the sample size, the power, which is 1 minus beta, increases. As 1 minus beta increases, we know that beta will decrease. In the same way, as the sample size decreases, the difference between the two means starts increasing. So these are some of the factors that are affected by the sample size. So next, let's go to the topic of the sample size for a two-tailed test. So in a two-tailed test, we already wrote down the formula. So n is z1 minus beta plus z1 minus alpha by whole square into sigma squared by mu naught minus mu one whole square. So this is the formula that we use. Now, so let's try and solve this problem. So here they have given a problem that contains, they want to test it for an 80% power with a significant difference if the drug change, so is to change a mean heart rate by five beats per minute. So this is mu naught minus mu one is five. So, and they have given you the sigma value, so which is 10. And they've also mentioned the significance so they are asking you to detect a significant difference. Remember that significant difference refers to an alpha value of 0 0.05. So using that data, so you have 1 minus beta is 80% or 0 0.80. Alpha is 0 0.05. Mu naught minus mu 1 is 5. And sigma is 10. So now let's export this data into a separate page and let's solve this problem. So this is the data that we have. Now, so the formula is EN equal to Z1 minus beta plus Z1 minus alpha by 2 whole square into sigma square by mu naught minus A1 whole square. So substitute the values into the formula. So you get Z0.80 plus z1 minus 0 0.05 by 2 whole square into 10 square divided by 5 square. So we are looking for two values. One is at 0 0.80. This is the same value as the last problem, so it's 0 0.84. And we also want to find this value, z1 minus 0 0.05 by 2. So it becomes z1 minus 0 0.025. So the value is Z 0 0.975. So I'm going to write the value, is, it's 1.96. So you can go back and check the problem and see if it is valid in the table. So Z 0 0.975 is 1.96. So substituting the values, you get 0 0.84 plus 1.96 square, 10 square by 5 square. So here you have Z 
zero point eight four plus one point nine six. So is two point eight. So you have two point eight square into ten square divided by five square. So that gives you a value of thirty one point three six. So the suitable yen value is thirty one point three six. But because we cannot take a sample size as a decimal number, decimal number, so we have to consider it as a next number, so which is thirty. So always remember the fact that when rounding off, use the larger number. So use the larger number. So that is the main factor to remember. so that ends this chapter so you have a lot of problems at the end of the chapter start doing them one by one and see if you can determine if there is any differences in the problems so in the first question they have given you a food questionnaire was mailed to 20 subjects to assess the intake and they determined that the standard deviation was 15 suppose we know from an in person interview that the previous study that the standard deviation is 20 so what would be what are the hypothesis to test if there is any differences between the standard deviations of the two methods so try this problem in the same way you have multiple problems here so do them one by one if you are not able to do it i'll make a separate class just noticing down the problems one by one